Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,373. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,373, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we have a great video here. We need to see how to extract every fifth value and conditionally format every fifth value. Now, this is the answer sheet. And watch what happens when I change this 5 to a 6. Now, I haven't hit Enter. Watch the conditional formatting. Watch the extracted values. When I hit Enter, instantly every sixth value is conditionally formatted in the original data set. And here we have 128, 341, and so on. All right, let's go over to the sheet 1373. Here are our numbers. The very first thing we're going to do is count how many values we have over here that sit in every fifth row. I'm going to do this two different ways. Now, the first way I'm going to do this is I'm going to count how many rows there are. I'm going to click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now, rows is a simple function. It simply counts from 2 to 94 and sees how many rows there are. Then I'm going to divide it by 5. Now, when I hit Enter, if there were exactly a multiple of 5, it would give me a whole number. But it's given me a fraction, and I want to round this down. So I'm going to use round down function. There's the number, and I'm always going to round down to the integer. So for number of digits, I put a 0, close parentheses, and Enter. If I have a column that actually lists the number of records, then I can simply use the max function. Click in the top cell, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, Control, Backspace, close parentheses, and I'm going to divide by this 5. It gives me the same 18.6, but now I'm going to use, instead of round down, I use the int. Since we're always going to have positive numbers, int always takes the integer moving down. So it will go from 18.6 to 18. Now the next thing I want to do is conditionally format. So I need this row highlighted in yellow, this row, and so on. Now we're going to highlight this whole range, then go to Home, Conditional Formatting, and look for an option to highlight every fifth row, but it's not there. So no problem. We can use new rule and use a logical true-false formula. Now, if I'm going to build a formula, put it in the dialog box. And in memory, the dialog box will copy it through every single cell. But every single cell in this data set will have some logical test. Am I in the fifth row? False. Am I in the fifth row? False. When it gets down here, if I ask the question, am I in the fifth row, that will yield true. So it will have the conditional formatting, true, false, false. Now, anytime you do a formula to enact conditional formatting, I like to build it in the cells off to the side, copy it over and down, and see if the patterns of trues and falses work. Now, for both the formula for conditional formatting and for extracting every fifth record, we're going to have a formula element that's called a number incrementer. And since we're copying down across the rows, I'm going to start with the formula element rows. Now, I need this rows to give me 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. I'm sitting in J2, so I'm going to type J dollar sign 2 colon J2 close parentheses. Now, lots of people post questions whenever I use rows and say, why don't you just use the row function? Well, row function, if you were to insert a new row somewhere, would give you the potential wrong answer. But rows will never give you the wrong answer. I also cover this topic in my book, Control Shift Enter. This is a robust method of generating the numbers 1, 2, whatever inside a formula. Now notice if I copy it down and then over, it gives me 1, 1, 2, 2. That's exactly the start of my formula. Now watch this. I've highlighted the entire range, the active cell at the top. I'm going to put it in edit mode with the F2 key. Now the question I need to ask is, am I in row 5? Am I in row 10? So I'm actually going to use the mod function. Now the mod function 
gives you the remainder after doing division. So if I put the number incrementer there, comma, and for the divisor, I give it this 5. I need to lock that in all directions, so I hit the F4 key. 1 divided by 5, remainder 4. 4 divided by 5, remainder 1. 5 divided by 5 will be remainder 0, and that will be our trigger. Now to populate this formula all the way through the highlighted range, I'm going to use Control and Enter. And there we go, our trigger will be 0. F2 to put it in edit mode. Then I ask the question, are you equal to 0? Control Enter to populate it all the way down. And there's our patterns of trues and falses. Now, if I want to use this formula in the dialog box for conditional format, I'm going to come to the top left cell, F2, and copy this in edit mode. Control C, escape to revert back to whatever was in the cell before I put it in edit mode. Now we need to highlight this entire range, highlight the top two cells, Control Shift down arrow. Now watch this. I'm going to use Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. That works whether you've highlighted a range or as we saw over here when we're in edit mode creating a formula. All right, now notice I copied the formula from the upper left. So make sure that the active cell is in the upper left. Home, conditional formatting new rule, or we can use the keyboard Alt-H-L-N. Now, there's a list of options here, and the very last one is the one we want. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. Now, I could take my mouse and click, or because the top item in the list is selected, if I hit Page Down, it in essence jumps all the way to the bottom. Once we select this, then we want this text box. Format values where this formula is true. Now I can click with my I-beam or hit the Tab key. Now I Control V to paste. That's the formula that would be copied in memory. Over and down, getting a true or false in every cell. Click Format. You can do whatever formatting from whichever of the four tabs you want. Click OK. Click OK, and look at that. And we can test this. 6, Enter. That is pretty amazing. Control Z. Now we want to come over to our extracting formula. Now we're going to use the index function and give the index function the entire column here. Index just is going to need to know which row or relative position in the data set you want to extract. So we need 5, 10, 15. In our formula, 5, 10, 15. So we'll build a number incrementer. Now I'm going to use the rows function. I'm sitting in H2. So I type H dollar sign 2 colon H2 close parentheses. We know that will give us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as we copy down. So we simply multiply. And I'm using my left arrow key to get that 5. And then F4 to lock it. Control Enter. And if I copy this down far enough to accommodate all the possible values I'm going to extract, there it is. There's our number incrementer for 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I've highlighted the whole range, active cell at the top. I simply hit F2. Now I'm going to, after the equal sign, type index tab. Now index is a lookup function, and it has an array. Those are the potential values you want to go and get from somewhere and bring back over here. So I'm going to click in the top cell, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock the range and jump the screen back in view. Now I type comma. And we're using the top option. We're not using the bottom option. I never use that bottom option because it involves multiple table lookup. And we're not doing that. And plus, there's other better ways to do multiple table lookup. But look at this. Our argument is row number. Now, row number means the actual relative position. So notice this 184 is in row 6, but we need relative position 5. So even though it says row number, think of it as relative position. There it is. It's already in there. Come to the end close parentheses. I'm going to populate this formula all the way down by using Control and Enter. Look at that, 184 minus 1 minus 14, just what we have in our data set.
Now, our formula is not quite done because you can see we have these errors down here. So I want to amend the formula at the top, copy it down. And in the cells where there are errors, I want to display nothing. But I also want to make sure to build an efficient formula so I don't have to run the formula in order to determine if there is an error. So in the active cell at the top, I hit F2. What I'm not going to do is use the if error function. Now, we could use the if error because this is a small data set. But I'm not going to do that because I like to build efficient formulas and get in the habit of using a formula that will be efficient in any situation. Now, actually, if the only way we could determine that this was an error was by running the formula, that's the situation where you use if error. But any other time, if there's an alternative logical test to determine when to run the formula and when to display nothing, you should use that. Now, there is for us, because we know how many records to extract. And as we're copying down, once we get past row 18, we just want to display nothing. We don't actually have to run the formula to get an error. So I'm going to use the if function and the logical test I'm going to cheat. I already have my number incrementer here, row. So I'm going to copy that in edit mode. Very carefully, the logical test. Watch this. I'm going to type a comma just to not confuse myself. There's the logical test. When the number incrementer is greater than our count of 18, and I'm going to lock that with the F4 key. Notice that comes out true or false down here. True, true, true. So comma, the value if true, that's when we want to display nothing. And the way you do that in an Excel formula is you do double quote, double quote. Now, technically, that is a zero length text string. Excel considers it text that has zero length. But that's what we use to display nothing. Then if we're not past row 18, we'll run our formula. Come to the end, close parentheses. I'm going to populate this all the way down, Control-Enter. And there we go. If I come over here and say, please show me every three instantly conditional formatting, there are our numbers. Back over here, every seven, Control-Enter. That is amazing. Five, Control-Enter. All right, that was a little fun with conditionally formatting every fifth record. And then looking at a formula for counting how many there are and a formula to extract. All right, we'll see you next video.